earlier, we learned the derivatives of trig functions. So now we got to talk about the antiderivatives of trig functions. So the antiderivative of cosine of x dx is just sine of x plus c. The antiderivative of sine of x dx is actually negative cosine of x plus c. So I think this one is the one that students always are slightly confused about it. Is, is it positive or negative? It just works the opposite of derivatives. And you can always check your answer by taking the derivative of this side. You take the derivative of this, you get sine of x. The antiderivative of secant squared x dx is tangent of x plus c. The antiderivative of secant x tangent x dx is just secant of x plus c. The antiderivative of cosecant x cotangent x dx, remember that's going to have a negative in front because it's a co thing. Plus c. And the antiderivative, so sometimes people put the negative here and sometimes they put the negative here. It means the same thing. Um, the antiderivative of, maybe I'll put a negative on this side, negative cosecant squared x dx, that's equal to cotangent of x plus c. So I delayed teaching you 3.9 because I wasn't convinced that you had memorized all the trig derivatives yet. But after giving you last week's quiz, I think most of us know it. So now we have to be able to go in reverse and find the antiderivatives, which is what we just did here. So let's look at some more examples. Um, if I have any, right here. So if you look at example D, um, This is not a single trig function. So I'm not really sure how to find the antiderivative of this. Does anybody have any uh, advice for me how to find the antiderivative of tangent x times cosine of x? Any advice? Anyone here good at trig? No feeling. What if I told you that there's a famous trig identity called the quotient identity? In other words, tangent of x is equal to sine of x divided by cosine of x. Would that change your mind? Wait, you're saying you could just take the tangent x and replace this with sine of x over cosine of x like this? So I could do this? And I'm saying, yes, you could do that. And then what do you notice happening? You're like, oh, wait, the cosine and the numerator and the cosine and the denominator cancel each other out? Yes. So you just get the antiderivative of sine of x. What's the antiderivative of sine? That's just negative cosine of x plus c. Why is the negative here? Because I know the derivative of a co thing is going to be negative, and I want the result to be positive. So I have to put a negative in front to cancel out with a negative from the derivative of cosine. So this is our final answer. Does that make sense? Is there any questions? I want you guys to try try five. Maybe someone should give us some advice. How do I, um, what should I do first? Someone help us here. What's the key idea? You times sec x with sec x equals sec x squared. Mm -hmm. And you times 
x and an x. You're distributing like this, right? Yeah. I agree. So this becomes secant squared x plus secant x times tangent x. So we're finding the antiderivative of that. And actually, your book is going to call that capital K of x, right? So they want the antiderivative. We are ahead of the game. We use this antiderivative notation of the indefinite integral like this. And we can split this up into two indefinite integrals. Okay. So I think, Steph, if you didn't see that trick, you could be sitting there for a long time. You could try to convert everything to sine and cosine, but that might not be helpful. But I think seeing it like this is super helpful if you know your derivatives well, right? So what's the antiderivative of secant squared x? It's tangent of x. What's the antiderivative of secant of x? Tangent x? That's just secant x. So I think this is how you do this problem. I tried to tell you guys knowing the derivatives of the trig functions was super important. I mean, I wasn't joking. You really need to know it well. So you can recognize it on site. So you have the feeling even before you recognize it. Like when I saw this, I almost distributed in my head when I look at it to tell, oh, this is gonna work. We're gonna have secant squared plus secant x tangent x. Now, if these, if these trig functions don't mean anything to you, then you don't have that intuition. So you really need that, all right? All right, cool. Let's take a look at number six. I think after seeing number five, number six will be easier for you. So try number six real quick. All right. So I think we need to do the same idea that we did the last time, which is you got to distribute this cosecant x. So when we do that, we're going to get this is equal to cosecant x cotangent x minus cosecant squared x. So if I wanted to find the antiderivative, which is called capital L of x, the antiderivative of cosecant x cotangent x is negative cosecant x. And the antiderivative of negative cosecant squared x is plus cotangent x. And then because of the antiderivative is a whole family of functions, we're gonna get plus C. So this is um, the antiderivative that we're looking for. 